there. Okay, so uh, thanks everyone for uh, attending. So the link to the slides, let me just put it back again there in case you want to follow it, okay. Um, so for today, I'll talk about chapter four. Uh, it's about data transformation. Uh, it's more of an overview more than anything else uh rather than anything else because uh you don't get into all of the details but it sort of sort of like gives you a sense of um what you could do with uh dplyr which is the key package that is going to be demonstrated in that chapter uh so that you sort of like dive into the uh into the thick of things so the learning objectives uh for this uh for this part is that you the book wants you to get a sense of how to transform the data a data set or if you wish a data frame uh under two sort of like conditions uh one is uh cleaning a data set from the perspective of cleaning a data set and the other is from the perspective of calculating subgroup summaries okay so cleaning a data set here means that you already have a data set with you uh but you want to clean it further or at least to do some interactive exploration uh, and then get rid of some stuff that looks strange and then move on to the analysis phase, uh, uh, analysis phase. So it's a little bit different from starting from the rawest form of the data and then going to the clean version that is sort of like usable for a particular purpose. Yeah. The other sort of like big part of the chapter is about calculating group subgroup summaries or group summaries, if you will, if you will. Okay, so this is a typical activity that you would encounter in statistical settings. Okay, so calculating the average for subgroups, uh, calculating the distribution for different subgroups, the distribution of some variable uh, for some subgroups of the data. Okay. And then the other learning objective is that uh, you, so they're trying to convey a sense of the motivation and the core ideas behind uh, dplyr, which is through verbs. Okay, so it's like they're trying to make an analogy to the English language or some other language where uh, you have an action word uh, that you're going to be using. And the idea is that uh, to get you to the point where when you do something with the data, you're able to express it in terms of words and then into the verbs that are present in dplyr. And the other relevant part of the chapter is this pipe. Uh, operator, or I think I, I think it's called an operator, but uh, uh, I'll just call it the pipe. Okay, and the idea for the pipe is that it's like then. Okay, it's like the word then. Okay, so let me just jump in uh, to the data to the to one of the examples actually in the in the chapter. Okay. Uh, rather than going through all of the sort of like the commands that you see in that chapter, let me just show you sort of like on a, from a big picture point of view uh, what it kind of looks like, okay? So as you may have noticed, it's not important at this moment, well, it's not important at this moment to know uh, why it looks like the, uh, like what these verbs really mean technically from, from the way it was designed, but you could already get a sense that you could already take, a, you could make a story about what they, what these set of commands are trying to convey right away. And I think that's one of the things that is very nice about this um, dplyr verb kind of design, okay? So as you may have noticed, uh, the word flights is here. So this probably is some object in R and this object in R is then followed by this pipe. And this pipe is like the word then. So it's like you have flights, you have some object, and then you do a filter, okay? So I, I think that's close to what we would associate with uh, the, the word, okay, filter. And then here you will see a condition, okay? Which is what you saw last time in chapter three, I think. So the destination is equal to IAH, okay? So you would see some weird things here, like for instance, what is this dest? And then you have this equal equal, and then you have these quotations, okay? So these quotations here suggest that IAH is a, is a string, okay? 
or these are characters. Uh, dest here is destination. So you could you could already get a sense of what this is telling you from the first line until the second line. So it's like you have some object and then you filter this object for all destinations that are equal to IAH. I think this is Houston, but I, I, I forgot. No? So let me know. Um, and then there, there you see the pipe again. So that means the, the word then, then shows up again. And then you have this mutate, okay? So if you don't know what mutate is, you could already see it from this part, okay? That it seems that we need to calculate something. We have to generate something. We generate something called speed and it's equal to distance divided by air time times 60. Uh, I don't know if this is coincidence now, but uh, if you look at dest here, it has a different color from speed, okay? So I think this is implicitly suggesting that speed here uh, is actually something that is new that is not present in the data in the data frame. Okay, and then you would also notice that you see equals equals here, and then here you see equals. So the first equal equals here is really matching. Okay? You're trying to match things, and here the equals here is to generate something. How would you calculate something? Okay, so so roughly you already know what the one two three is trying to do. And then afterwards, there's a select part, okay? So the select part gives you, a, so here you see a set of, a set of uh, names here, okay? And chances are, these are the variables in the data set that you selected, okay? And you would notice something like year colon day, okay? Which should remind you of the sequence, a sequence, okay? Uh, from chapter three, which is the colon part. So when you see one colon three, that that means one, two, three. So uh, presumably there's something that is related to that here, okay? And then you have all of these uh, other uh, other words, okay? Other variables, okay? And the idea is that you're selecting these variables, okay? And then arrange the result according to the variable speed that was just generated, okay? But in, now you would notice that there's a DESC here, which is suggestive that is descending order, in descending order. So that means that you have the top speed first, display the, the rows with the top speed first, and then go down to the lowest uh, speed, okay? Uh, so that also suggests that arrange, by default, arranges things by, in ascending order, okay? So, so now, as you can see from these five lines, okay, from these from, from these five lines, you could already get a sense of what uh, they're trying to do. Okay, let me just see the chat. Okay. Yeah, so you're right that they're the same. Huh? So that's the base pipe, base R pipe. Okay, and I think that's the one that they also use in the in the book. In the first edition, I guess it's the percent uh, greater than symbol than percent, okay? Okay, so you could already articulate what operations were applied to the data. And you, I, I think whenever you see code like this, you, you should ask what questions were asked to get to this code so that you get a sense of what to do. So I think the structure is like, you have a question you asked and then you write down your answer Okay. You write down your answer in terms of how you're going to get the answer to that question and then hope that, you're, that the way you wrote down the answer to how you were going to answer the question is in terms of the verbs that you see in dplyr. Okay. So here's the output from the data cleaning. I, I put the two lines here explicitly so that you know that I rely on these two libraries to, uh, to do the work. Okay, so there was a comment in the chat now. So when I was first learning dplyr, I always mixed up filter and select. Uh, is, is there, is, can you elaborate on that? It would be interesting to know more about it, okay. So I didn't read the book beforehand. It was just kind of like doing it in class and just, um, yeah, I don't know. They kind of seem kind of similar in a way um, where it could be like, filter, I, like, like, so 
filter versus select where I think the idea is like filter is done to rows and select is done to columns but I didn't really like think of it that way originally and that's where I would get mixed up yeah thanks for that so that so I was just about to say that uh the two verbs are operating on different uh sort of like you have one operates on rows and the other operates on, on columns uh so I think the at least for me when I when I first encountered filter in select I kind of got that the select part is sort of like you you just want to select uh columns of the of a data set so and then and then for filter you want to uh you want to get rid of entries from your data set from the from a row perspective so that's how I would uh, understand it, but uh, let me see the chat. Okay. That's the letter C for columns. Okay, <laughs> thanks for that, Jeremy. Uh, I didn't think that uh, think of that mnemonic. Yeah, so there. Uh, I it would be nice to talk further about um, uh, why why it would why it was not very easy for why it was not readily accessible to you but to me it was sort of like not it, it felt natural so uh, maybe we'll come back to that in the end um so so here i the first two lines here i just put the the libraries that are needed so that you'll be able to run this command for this slide okay in case you want to copy paste okay um so here you see the visual output of the data of, of what was of what was done and you can see that speed is arranged in uh from top from from the highest to the lowest okay and then you already could get a sense of what year column day does because it seems that year column day includes everything that is between year and day okay at least in the original uh uh after going through the filter after going through the mutate whatever is the data frame at that state select the columns year up to day okay there so let me see so there were uh yeah okay so the so now i'm gonna just show you what it what the code would look like if you don't have pipe if you don't have the pipe if you don't have the pipe it kind of looks like this okay so the first two lines are the same because these are just the libraries that you need to load but the third up to the seventh lines are a little bit different in the sense that here i have to have sort of like put intermediate objects okay so the pipe sort of like transports it to the next to the next verb and then after the processing was done it will it will transport to the next verb without you explicitly writing out the data frame okay but here without the pipe you would have to write down explicitly the frames okay so you filter flights for destinations ih and then you have and then you put it in a temporary intermediate object called flights ih and then and then you go and then you use that data frame to gen to, to then create your speed variable and then put it back to flights IH. Okay. And then and so on. Okay. The difference between these two is that here in, in the previous slide, uh I actually don't save the results of four up to seven. You don't actually get to see the, you don't get to save. The output of that object, although you see what the output looks like from an from an interactive point of view. So it's like when you when you type in the command, you see an output. That's it. But once you close, once you once you do some other commands, you would have to repeat these commands if you really need uh, a version that relies on this kind of data cleaning. Okay. So. So that's the sort of like one of the advantages of the of having those pipes. Okay, so it it lessens the burden of typing out all of these 
uh, things. And there's a way to save the resulting object here from the previous one with the pipe. You just put flights IAH uh, less than dash, and then you should be assigned to, and, and then assign the result of this command of lines three to seven to flights IAH, and then you'll be able to save it into that, uh, into a data frame known called flights IAH, okay? So I think I'll stop here for the moment. So are there are there questions at the moment, like for the this overview? Okay. It was good so far. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So now I I'll move on. Okay. The next task is sort of like subgroup summaries. No subgroup summaries. So again, the first two lines are just as before. Okay. So here, as you can see, you 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 see the object flights, and then you have group by. So again, this relies on our intuitive or at least our uh, initial expectation of what it should do, which is to group by month, okay, but using the month variable, and then afterwards, okay, once you do the grouping, uh, you summarize, okay, you you do a summary, and what does this summary do? You're asked to get from this summary, you're actually producing, okay? You're actually producing new variables, delay and n, okay? And you're producing these summaries, okay? On a separate data frame, okay? On a separate data frame, which contains delay and n, okay? And this delay variable is really the average of uh, the departure delay and with na.rm equals true. So the book mentions this, somewhere about the treatment of mi missing values. And I, I invite you to also have a look at that part. Uh, when you when you have this NA, the, these represent the missing variables. In the data in a data frame, they, they usually appear as capital N, capital A, okay? And then NA.RM equals true means you have to remove them because you couldn't calculate the mean, at least the way it's programmed, you couldn't calculate it uh, if there are missing entries, okay? And then this n here is actually quite convenient because it really calculates how many observations are within uh, within that month, okay? So for example, here, the month here is, you, you do the grouping by month, and then there are flights within that month. And how many of our, our how many are, how many flights are there in that month? And that would be here in n equals n, okay? So presumably, the person who produces this set of uh, lines of code is probably asking, "What would be what's the what's the average departure delay on a monthly basis?" Okay, and then once they ask that question, then they sort of like to answer that question, they have to write down a series of operations to get to that point to get the answer to that question, and the dplyr verbs really do help in, in that regard, okay? And here's the output. As I mentioned, there's uh, the month, okay? Because this is the grouping variable. And then you the, you get the average delay for, for every month. And these are the number of flights within a month, okay? There. Uh -huh. I think I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the number here, so let's say there are missing observations now. Let's say there are missing observations in, in depth delay, okay? I think the count here includes those missing observations if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I'll have to get back to, I'll have to think, I'll have to get back to it, okay? So, and again, I show you what it looks like if you don't have the pipes, okay? okay. And you get the same result as well, but it's it might be a bit inconvenient to write it down. But the convenience comes at a price. It's harder to find where you have an error because if you have a long pipe, it's gonna be troublesome to actually try to figure out to knock or to, to figure out which part is uh, causing a problem if there's an error. So my, my suggestion is to try a version of this uh, command where you do a typo, an intentional typo, and then try to see what the error kind of looks like, and then uh, and then compare it with 
with this no pipe version. And you would see that the debugging part is, seems to be much easier if you don't have these pipes. So there's a sort of like a trade-off in that sense. Okay. okay. So I think I, I'll pause here for a moment. Uh, are there questions? Okay. Let me see. Okay. Okay. So 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 the the question is why why did I do it this way? Why didn't I just go through each command one by one? Well, the idea is uh, it's inspired by one of the exercises from section four point five point seven. Uh, the sixth exercise. So when I when I, when I write it down this way, it's really four point five point seven. That's the section, and then point six means it's the sixth exercise, which I also invite you to to work on because, um, especially the the one where they they have an exercise involving group by, because you would see how it operates in in some sense. Okay, and you might not notice things. And it helps you train your eye to notice uh, output that looks somewhat similar, but actually have some details that are different. Okay, slight details that are very different. Okay. Uh, another reason for doing for showing you that big picture is that it's to serve as a contrast to the plus that you see that that you've seen in uh, ggplot. Okay, and the the contrast between the two. The previous one, those pipes are really about, then I do this, then I do that, okay? But for plus here, it's more of like, okay, I have a canvas and then from on that canvas, I put in the axis, I layer the axis, I layer the points, I layer, uh, um, I, I layer the color and so on. So it's it's more of like a canvas approach for, for this one uh, instead of the pipes where it's more of like, uh, and uh, how, how should I put it? It's more industrial, like, okay, move to this point and the next point and the next point, okay? And then it also allows me to introduce you to the dplyr verbs right away, at least the most, what I think are the most useful ones, which is filter, mutate, select, arrange, group by, and summarize. From these six commands, you could already do, do a lot and you could already stumble to many weird things right away, okay? There are other commands that were that are available in dplyr, but I I might not have a lot of time to work through all of them. But as I as Lydia mentioned earlier, uh, this filter mutate they are applied to rows, okay. And then for for select and arrange they're applied to columns. And then if you apply to groups, then you have this group by and summarize, okay. And then if I have time, I'll also show you the sort of like the base R version because I because I usually do work in base R, not as an expert, but it's sort of like my default. So, so you could see what a contrast as well, okay? So there are, so at least in the chapter, it's not just about the verbs themselves, but there are recurring operations that you see in the chapter and uh the recurring operations when you do these kinds of um when, when you do when you work with the data uh typically fall into these five things i think okay five skills that you need uh first is how to get the variable names or at least to get a sense of what these variables look like okay? the second is to form conditions so that you could filter things you could match things and so on uh, and then the other one is to create variables and knowing how to write out these formulas, okay? And another recurring operation is sort of like playing around with the data or in more formal ways, it's a quick interactive exploration okay, of the data, okay? So that means that you need to sort of like do these operations in such a way that it could show up in the command line in a convenient fashion and something that you could work with at least fast enough. Okay, without having to, to without having to dig through uh, a spreadsheet. Okay, and then the last sort of like skill is sort of like how to answer a question through a series of operations and then report a final answer. Okay, so roughly I think th these are the five things that that you see showing up again and again in the chapter. So let me just illustrate some of these. Okay, 
uh, one is how to get these variable names, okay? And the there's a convenient command called glimpse, and it al already shows you what the data frame kind of looks like. So there are 336, about 337,000 flights, flights. There are 19 columns representing the data, okay, uh, the, the variables, okay, that were which were collected, okay, for each of these flights, okay, and then uh, you'll see the variable names here, okay, you'll see the variable names here, you'll see the types that they have, okay, you'll see int, dbl, chr, dttm, okay, and so on, okay, so that gets you some exposure to it, but they, they don't elaborate at this point, okay. You would also notice that you see the sort of like the first few values of each of these variables, okay, okay. So that already tell, gives you a sense that when you want to use these variables that say dest, and then if you want to point to, or if you want to match to IAH, then you need to make sure that you're in the right format, okay? Uh, one last thing from this uh, output is this dollar part. So I don't know why there's a dollar here, but I think this is, roughly similar to what you see in base R, where when you refer to a column name, they when you want to point to a column name, we usually use dollar. So like flights dollar year points to that uh, year variable. Okay, so you get that vector of, uh, of years. Okay. Uh, for me, I usually just need the names of the, of the columns. So call names in base R does this easily in, 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 in a way, okay? And if I want to know more details, I'll sort of like do flights dollar year and then press enter and then I could see what the flights kind of look like, okay? Okay, so I'll pause here again. Uh, are there questions? Let's see. Okay. Okay, so there's another exercise that uh, that is also quite nice, which is exercise 4.2.5, which allows you to get some skill in writing out conditions or forming conditions, okay? Forming conditions. And uh, to answer this exercise, it's really important that you know what the data set kind of looks like. So Glimpse really helps. Um, what's missing actually is a, what, what, what they would call a code book which is what, what is the measurement of these variables, okay? But I, I think you kind of would be able to figure out what the units would be. So for example, uh, if you're looking at departure delays, at least from the names of the variables, so that's why it's important to have a, a nice name for the, for the variables. So this kind of feels like departure, the, the amount of delay for, for the departure. And you see the actual de departure time and this, this the scheduled uh, departure time. And you can see that the difference between these two, 517 and 515 is two. Okay. So, so roughly this de departure delay, it should be in minutes. Okay. So you could infer from, from this what, what, it, what, uh, what units were, were used, but it would it would be nice to have a code book as well, a documentation to really uh, help you figure out some of these things in case things become more complicated. Okay. Let me see. Okay, so Jeremy has a suggestion about how to debug a long pipeline in the chat now. So ha have a look at that one. Thank you for that. Okay. So yeah, so what, once you know what the data kind of looks like, what's the measurement more or less, you'll be able to, uh, so for example, I already made a mistake here, right? I already made a mistake here. So this should be, instead of two, this should be 120 really, okay? This should be 120, okay? And then uh, another thing that, Another thing to note is that if you want to match where you want to match characters and you have several characters, okay, so let's say you have IH and HO, you want to match IH or HOU, then 
you have to make sure that you're telling it that the destination should be the match to this or that the destination should match to HOU rather than removing this part. Kind of like what we would do in normal conversations now where you drop some words, but here they, you have to be a bit more specific or you could use percent in percent. Okay. Yeah, so this one was uh, intentional. I should have done something intentional here as well, but uh, yeah. There was a hard question in the in that exercise, which is uh, we're delayed by at least an hour, but made up over thirty minutes in flight. Uh, I, I don't know. To I was uh, I was stuck here. Uh, I was stuck here for some reason, uh, and um, and I was trying to really count or at least try to figure out the flight time. I was trying to fig figure out the flight time. And uh, I think it was a bit more complicated. So I'll show you how I did the exploration later on. But here, I already put the suggested solution. The suggested solution was something like this. Okay, uh, The departure delay greater than or equal to 60. And then the difference between these two should be greater than 30. I, I'm not sure I, I, I could understand this part. But this part... I'm not very, I'm not really sure. So because arrival delay, you could arrive earlier. So that would be a negative quantity. Okay. That would be a negative quantity. So I'm not really sure what this is trying to do. Okay. So that's why at this point I want to show you a quick interactive exploration. Okay. So these verbs like select really help in taking in getting you to zoom into the data do a quick peek to sort of like confirm what you what you think or to at least to to give you a situation where ah you have not thought about this problem now you got got a quick peek you now have to modify your strategy okay so th this is these verbs are very important for that uh, for that reason. And then there are many options for select, relocate, and mutate. Let me just mention what I mean by options. So, so for select, let me just make this bigger. There. So you would see options like starts with, so that you could uh, it's easier to do the match now in case you don't know all the names or especially if you have a long list of names. So this, this is very important. And then you also have, um, yeah, for mutate, you'll have options like dot before, like putting it at the very beginning or before some variable. So you have those kinds of options there. And I, I think if you, I think you would only really use them if you're doing a quick exploration rather than when you already sort of like have an idea of what you want the, uh, how you want to do the analysis. Okay? You already have the sort of like code and you want to design the code properly so that you could run it uh, without any user intervention. So it's a little bit, uh, there are commands or there are options which, are useful when you want to do a, something quick, and there are, and these options might not be very useful when you are already sort of like formalizing things, like documenting things for yourself, uh, putting down the touches to your code, or at least a draft of your code. Okay, so here's what I did. Okay, so what I did was to select from the flights. Okay, from the flights object. I look at the columns that have departure, arrival, that starts with those, uh, um, yeah, that starts with those names, uh, those characters, and then ends with time, okay? Also include those that end with time, okay? And then I did some renaming so that I could display it much more snugly into the screen that you see here, okay? Typically, I wouldn't do this in a, I wouldn't do this in a formal code unless the 
uh in the draft of the of a code unless uh unless the name is really bad okay but here i need it so that i could make it fit snugly to the screen okay and then once i do the renaming i sort of like reorder you can use select to do the reordering rather than relocate okay so you could just select uh and write it write down what how you want the columns to be displayed so that it facilitates your your exploration and then i create new variables okay using mutate uh, you have the flight time and the actual flight time okay this will there's a comment here this might not this will not work if you have flights arriving after 0 100 hours but that's that's beside the point for now this has to be modified if you want to account for the fact that, for instance, you left around uh, around 11 p.m. and then you reach the destination around 1 a.m. Okay. And then you have this nice command called slice. Okay. There's a class of commands called slice underscore something, which allows you to slice through the data set, give you parts of it so that you could have a look. Okay. The head part is sort of like the top uh the top part of the data frame as it reaches this point and then n equals five here means uh i want the first five rows of that okay and here the first five rows and those uh and those variables are displayed in an in a nice way okay and here you could already see why why i did it this way is because now it's easier to see the how the how the departure delay is related to the ske the scheduled one and the actual time of departure and similarly for the arrivals and then you have a variable called called air underscore time I, I don't know what that really means I'm guessing at this point that it's sort of like how much time you spent uh above the ground or at least no at an altitude that is uh for flying. Okay, not the one that is uh, taking off and then uh, going down. Okay, uh, I came to that sort of like conclusion. I don't know if it's warranted because the actual flight time is sort of like around three hundred minutes, but the air time is about two hundred twenty-two. So that means that there's sort of like the the takeoff part and the landing part is not included here. Okay. So when I when I do this uh, when I do this exploration. Uh, I still couldn't really answer this question, okay? but it gives me some way to think about whether this solution makes sense or this, I, 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 because I, as of this moment, I still couldn't make sense of it. Okay, So it's easy to do the depth delay greater than or equal to 60, but making it up over 30 minutes in flight, it's harder to answer because I don't really know uh, the amount of time done for takeoff and for landing unless I do a system of equations, but I I, I, no, I have to figure that one out too, okay? So, but this kind of quick interactive exploration gives you a sense of, uh, it allows you to really consider things a bit more carefully and to, uh, and to make sure that you are able to interact with the output fast enough you have to display it in such a way that uh, you'll be able to access things much faster, okay? And rather than things overflowing and not getting displayed, okay? Okay, I think I'll pause here again. Uh, are there questions? A, yeah, um, AC time, you said that's actual time, right? Yes. Actual time. Can you go back to the other screen? The other, yeah. Is it this, is it this one? Yeah. What if it was like um the um because one of them was like the wait actually go back to the <laughs> data again let me make sure yeah <laughs> um, okay so yeah what if kind of like the scheduled like the scheduled or minus the arrival. Because then if it was scheduled to fly for like an hour and a half and then it only flew for an hour, you'd see that it made up time. I don't know if that would yeah. kind of answer the question. 
I I think so, but how 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 does it answer this? How, how uh, this one? I don't. I don't know. I, I had a hard time understanding this one for for some reason. So, uh, yeah. I think that the, would be it. That it made up over thirty minutes in flight would be. It was delayed for an hour, but mm -hmm. it was supposed to fly for an hour and a half, but it actually mm -hmm. only flew for an hour. So it made up that extra. It made up the thirty minutes. Because it flew faster, kind of thing. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, oh, I. I had. To, I. For some reason, I. I. It. I don't know. I. I. I could. I. I couldn't understand it for for now. Yeah. But uh, I'll have to think about it now. But I. Uh, yeah. So the the. So I, I. I. I sort of like just put put this out there just so. Uh, just so there's some just so just so I could also illustrate this quick interactive exploration as well. Uh and at least this is my way of making sense of it of it. But yeah, I'm not very successful at that. Yeah. But thank you for that. Yeah. I have to think about that. Okay. Uh are there any other questions or remarks or yeah? Okay. Yeah, so I think uh, I'll be running out of time soon. No? But uh, there's still a couple of there's still a couple of slides. Uh, those couple of slides are about the other exercises. So this exercise is from four point two point five from that section, the fifth exercise. Okay, and you have the problem is which flights traveled the farthest uh, farthest distance. Okay. Yeah, and then, yeah, let me see. Ah, yes. So, so for this one, if you want to answer this question interactively, so you just go through the flights object, arrange the distance, okay? The distance uh, variable from uh, top to bottom, okay? So that you can see the top right away. And then you select the variables that are most relevant to answer your question. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't show everything. Okay. But as you can see, you have other rows here, but these rows are not really relevant. No, you only need this top, top one, which is top few, which is four, nine, eight, three. So that's the, that's the farthest distance. And then the flight is really a, a flight called HA 51, I guess. And then you have, it's actually a flight from JFK to HNL. I don't know where HNL is. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, you could use the slice max command to do that. Okay, and you would notice that the output looks the same, but actually there's a subtle difference. Here you see everything, and here you see only those three hundred forty-two. So those three hundred forty-two are actually those three hundred forty-two flights that are all have the same distance 4983. Okay. So that's a subtle difference between the two. And it these two may have their own uses. Now, so I just show you both so that you get a sense of uh of it. And then if you want, sorry, let me see the chat. Yeah. So if you want to if you want to look at the if you change the problem to you want the five flights with the farthest distance, then this is a bit more complicated. Slice max, I don't think it would work because if you do slice max, you put the same n equals five, which is I think a possible option if I'm not mistaken, you would get the first five rows here, okay? Uh, which is not the top, these are not the top five flights per se because these are not, uh, these are essentially the same flight. Okay. So what I what I did here was to use this distinct uh distinct variable which that's uh, a distinct uh verb which allows you to get rid of that problem. Okay. So what I did was to start with flights, focus on these three things. Uh I group by origin and destination. Okay. And then from 
once I group by origin and destination, find the unique flights, okay, the, the unique flights uh, according to that grouping, okay? And then after that, I ungroup it and then do a slice max. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I think it, the, I, I'm not sure. So we, you could, we, you could certainly try it and then see how it works now. I'll have to look into it now. So can can we use? So the question was, can't we use the n parameter in slice max to get the top five? Uh, if I do, if I do it here, I think you'll only see the first. I think you'll see this output again, okay, which will not give you the top five uh, flights with the farthest distance. But I, I can do it once I use this set of commands. If you have other ways of doing it, please do let me know. Okay. But this was like how, how I would do it after reading the chapter. Yeah. Okay. And then I think the last demonstration that I'll have in the time remaining is to sort of like show you one of the uh one of the things in the book, which is the, the mixing of the visualization and this transformation of the data, okay? So I changed the question. There was a different data set that was used in the book. I'm not sure why they did that, but for the sake of sticking with NYC flights, I just chose uh, which plane traveled the most to LAX in 2013, and then plot the distribution of its delay times. So. So you have you want I want to know what's the plane uh, which traveled the most to LAX, and then using that plane, I want to know the distribution of its delay times. Okay. So if you do a if you if you do a this is more related to answering a question so that you could have a presentable output of a, a final answer uh, that could be used by someone else directly. Okay. So. Of course, there would be a phase where you do a quick visual exploration, okay? A quick interactive, uh, sorry, quick interactive exploration. You could do that, uh, and that's actually what I did. And what I, what's the difference this time is that I need to save the output of that exploration, okay? To get to this final code that I did, I I did some experimentation, and then ultimately refine the code to get to this point, and then assign that the answer to that uh question to plane okay so i needed to look at destinations that are lax and then this is the tail number of the plane okay i think this is for the plane and i needed to know uh i needed to know how many times uh they fly to these planes fly to lax so the grouping variable is the plane Okay, there are you have different planes, and then for those different planes, they go to LA LAX regularly, and I need to know how many times they've done that, and then I need to know uh, the the one that has the highest uh, number of times going to LAX, and that's what I do here, and then afterwards, once I do the slice max, I only select the one that is most relevant, which is the tail number. Okay. So this one is assigned to plane. This character here, or this, this tibble, sorry. This tibble is assigned to plane. And then I do a visualization later, okay? So that's sort of like the, the, output, the output of your, uh, in, in an attempt to answer the question, it gets siphoned to the next phase, which is to visualize uh, this part. Now plot the distribution of its delay times. So you need ggplot2 for this one, okay? And then here I needed to do something that is not really discussed in the book yet, okay? Which is to convert this tibble into something that would be usable by filter, okay? So for filter, you need to specify the character string, but this is not a character string yet. So the idea is to change this into a character string. So this code might not work it, it it might not work all the time, but that's this thing works because I only have this one uh, 
one answer here, one plane, okay? If the flights were, if there were planes that flew to NAX, uh, if, let's say if there were two planes which flew to NA LAX uh, the same number of times and they're on the top, they're the maximum, then it's a bit more complicated. I think it would be a bit more complicated to write this down, but it should, but it's something that could, this is still doable, okay? Okay, so, so here you have asked that character. So this basically forces this plane Tibble to become a character, okay? And that character would be this N328AA. Okay. And then once I filter, look at all of those flights involving that plane, I calculate the total delay, which is the departure delay plus the arrival delay, okay? okay. And then afterwards, so there will be a new variable called total delay, and I'm gonna use that for my histogram to plot the distribution of uh, delay times. Ah, yes. So why why do we need to set the plane to character? Because the plane here is uh, is a tibble. So it's not a character yet. It's a it's like a data frame at this point. And if you want to do filter with this kind of matching, you have to make sure that it's you're matching to a care here at least you want the you want the rows of the data set involving a plane that has this tail number. So that means that your tail num should be equal to quotations N3, N328AA, but it's not a character yet at this stage. So I have to force it to become a character. That's the, that's the only explanation that I could think of uh, to answer that question. And then, and then, uh, and then I do the plot. So layer the canvas and then do this histogram. So this is sort of like a, a rough, rough visualization you could design this to, to make these numbers larger this these things larger and then this would be much nicer i think yeah, but i didn't go through that uh here anymore okay so yeah so that's the sort of like rough overview of the chapter what it, it's sort of like trying to demonstrate to you what these verbs are this what dplyr is trying to do how you combine it with ggplot uh, and the power that is available to you right away, okay? But there are definitely a lot of details that are like not here and not in the in the book as well, okay? So the attention that you should spend uh, making sure of sort of like, like for instance, this one, okay? So my first inclination would be to do plane, okay? Because I already have the plane, okay? But the what they're expecting here at, at filter is a character at least intended purpose that I that I have. So that means I have to do some more work. So that that uh, those kinds of things really do come in a lot. And um, yeah. And you will see, especially in when when you do searches, you no, know, when you look for help, people are always asking these kinds of questions where oh, I don't have the uh, I need a particular type but I only have that other type. How do I do this conversion? So it's like, it's a it's a recurring kind of theme. So I I thought that I might as well share it here as well, okay? At least by chance, no? I, I, while, while making this problem. No? Okay, I'll spend the remaining time just uh, showing you what it looks like in base R. If I were to do it uh, in base R, how I would do it. As you can see, it looks ugly, no? It's like, it, it does look ugly uh, because you see a lot of rep repeated things, okay? okay. But you see the dollar showing up, okay? Dollar and this part here where you do extractions, okay? You see that regularly, okay? okay. Uh, there's a way to get rid of all of these flights dollar, flights IAH dollar. It's with this with command. This makes things a bit cleaner, okay? Let's make things a little bit cleaner. So uh, you could have a look at this one if you're interested, but this is not the main thing, but I just wanted you to uh, see a version, a contrast so that you could, you also have a sense of what other people could be doing. Okay. And similarly, if you want to do uh, group summaries, uh, I could actually create a data frame containing the summarized, the, the, sorry, the group summary. 
okay? So I have the first 12 months and then I create a delay variable and an end variable according to this t apply command. That's how I would have done it. So uh, we're, we're not gonna go through what it is, but I hope it should give you some curiosity as to uh, about these commands, okay? Because this t apply is really, really very convenient for doing group summaries. And then you just have to change the function that you're using to, to create the summary. So here I want the, the average for the subgroups represented by month. I Here I want the length of the, of this departure delay vector for every month, okay? So that's how you see this part. Okay, I think I don't have time. So I think that's also the end of the slides. So uh, yeah, Sh I think I should put end here. Oops, sorry. Thank you so much, Andrew. This was great.